Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. As many of you know, I've been doing a video series demonstrating how to use Topaz Labs to noise AI, sharpen AI, gigapixel AI, and photo AI as standalone applications and as plugins in Lightroom and Photoshop. I've been using all of these apps since they've been released and I think I've developed the best way to use them. Now I've already finished all of the videos for Denoise AI and Sharpen AI and I finished three of the four videos for Photo AI. Today we're going to be doing the last video on Photo AI. All of the videos are in a playlist. In the description below this video you'll see a link for that playlist. Now I wanted to do a fourth video on Photo AI. Now I only did three on Denoise AI and Sharpen AI and my plan is to only do three for Gigapixel AI. The reason why I want to do this extra video on Photo AI is because I believe it does a fantastic job on old photos. So if you have an old, old image and you just scanned it and you have it on your computer and it's kind of blurry and it's just was shot with a cheap camera, Photo AI does a great job restoring it. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. Now I have Photo AI open. I'm going to use it as a standalone app, but what I'm going to be showing you today it will work equally fine as a Lightroom or Photoshop plugin. So I'm going to browse images and on my desktop I have a photo of my niece Lisa and my mother that was taken in 1975. Now I did a video in the past and I used this image and I mentioned it was taken in 1985 and my niece saw that video and she called me to thank me for taking 10 years off her life or making her 10 years younger. Um, but it was unfortunately 1975 and I actually took this image myself with the first camera I ever owned. It was a Kodak Instamatic 110 camera and I took this photo. Now you can see since autopilot is on, it already did some like processing to it. Let's zoom in a little more. Let's zoom into 200% and let it re-render. It's, it's updated actually I should say. So here's a before after. I'll just click right on it and hold the left mouse button in. There's before. And there's after. I could go down to this eyeball too and just click on that eyeball. There's before and there's after. I think you'll agree. It really did a great job. Now, by default, what it did do is it recovered the faces. You could see if I open that up, there is a slider for strength. It found two faces. It also allows you to select a face if it missed one, but it did find both of them and it put the strength at 80. And you can see these little dots here indicate those, these are automatic adjustments. Autopilot did these. And I think it did a good job on the faces. There's before and there's after. Also, it enhanced resolution. It will only enhance resolution when it upscales and it automatically upscaled the image to 4X because this was a very small low resolution image. So it brought it up to 1292 to 1316. So it looks very good. But if you look at it, uh, you see these weird horizontal lines. I don't know what that's from. And also there's some creases up in here from the, you know, just from the photo itself. I'm wondering if remove noise would take care of those. So I'm going to turn on remove noise. And again, it's got a re-render. You can see in the lower left hand corner. Look at that. I, should, I did it really very quickly. There's before and there's after. It even took out those lines. There's before and there's after. So it did a very, very nice job. Now, I do want to crop it. You can see I was just a kid when I took this image and you can see that I left all the space up here. Although I probably do that today too. Shouldn't make an excuse because I was young. I still make mistakes. But let's crop it. So I'm going to open up the crop tool and I'm going to go to a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to use a square crop and I'm going to bring this, oops, going to bring this handle down like that. Move it over this way. It looks pretty good. So we'll apply the crop. It has to re-render. Let it do its thing. Oh, and it automatically turned off. Or did it? No, it's got to still re-render. Sorry. There it is. So there's before and there's after. And I think you'll agree. It really does a nice job on these old photos. So I'm going to save this. I like it the way it is. I don't think I need to sharpen anything. I think it's sharp enough. Um, just the camera itself, you know, it had one of those magic bulb flashes and it's got some ghosting from the flash. There's not much you could do with that unless you maybe took it in Photoshop and you did some clone and stamp to get rid of that. But I think it's fine the way it is because it used a relatively slow shutter speed. 
uh, you know, because it is just a Kodak Instamatic camera. And we're going to save it. So we're going to click save. And um, I'm going to preserve, should I, I could save it as a JPEG, a PNG, a TIFF, or a DNG. Um, you're not going to get a ton more information by saving it as a raw file, a DNG. And I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. And we'll put quality. Usually anything below 80 or above 80, I'm sorry, you won't really be able to see the difference, but it will make your file larger. So if I go down to, let's say, 30, it's going to be a very small file, but it's going to be compressed quite a bit, so it will affect the quality. If I get it up to 80 or above, you, from that point on, you won't see much of a difference, but we'll just put it at 100 for the fun of it. We're going to keep it in the original folder, which was my desktop. It's going to have the suffix, the suffix dash topaz, and we'll save it. So let it do its thing, save the image, and it's done. We'll close the window. We're done here. I'm going to close the application. And this is it right here. This is our processed image. And you can see it looks great. And we'll open next to that the other image. You can see it's a lot smaller. And you can see probably, if I blow it up in post-production here, you can see that. Let's move this over here. You can see that it's much improved. So that's how you use Topaz Labs Photo AI on an old photo. I think it does a great job and I've been actually doing a lot of my old photographs, uh, running them through Topaz Photo AI to restore them and I really like the results. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.